Uh, so uh, once I finally got this thing set up and zeroed in so it would drill and lathe right and all that kind of stuff, then I had uh, some issues on the back with some weird stuff going on, but I was able to fix that too. I had to go to Lowe's and get some set screws. And uh, so I said, well, it's all set up. And I got a ton of this key stock because I bought three 12 inch pieces. So I just started cranking these out, man. Got a bunch of them. They haven't had the final left right sizing, the, the height, but uh, just looking at it to make sure it's one of the ones. See, so one side will be faced, the other side's cutting a saw, and it has to be lengthened properly. Uh, but you know, I can make some for a 308 cam or my 275 cam. So I just said, oh, screw it, this is what I'll do for the next couple days. I think I've done this for three days now because, you know, I had to figure all this out. I don't have to do any metal working, <laughs> you know. But uh, this thing, I think, was made in the 1930s. It's really old. This is not part of this. Somebody added this, okay, and uh, it wasn't right. I got all this working, though. And uh, when I got it, okay, none of this stuff worked. These are 3D printed gears. And uh, need to be oiled. But this actually jumps back and forth and changes the gear ratios and stuff. And this is what drives the thread or stuff and all that. And this works. It is 3D printed gears. There's, there's a white one. Okay. There's another one. And uh, so that worked. But uh, the reason I bought this thing, I didn't want a metal eighth. Okay. See that backhoe way over there? This backhoe. So. I won't go into the whole story about the backhoe, but I rebuilt the whole thing. It took like two years. Engine, hydraulics, the uh, rams, and then all the little bushings. <clears throat> well, some of the bushings aren't available. And as I rebuilt the tower on the back, um, the bushings were just completely wore out. And so I took all this stuff to a machine shop. And uh, the guy said, it'd be about three months before I can get to it. I'm like, what? He goes, because of COVID... And all the Chinese stuff people brought in here, backhoes, tractors, you know, construction equipment, all the Chinese stuff is breaking down. And we have contracts all over the East Coast, New York City and all that to fix all this stuff that the you know, cities and stuff built or bought that's broke down. So, I mean, they're just having to machine the parts because you couldn't get anything in from China. And so you couldn't, I mean, this is a, we're not talking about a big shop. This is a shop out in the middle of a place called Shenandoah. There's nothing around it. You have to drive a half hour to get to it. It's out in the mountains, and they were bogged down with work, much less any other machine shop. So finally I said, screw it. I left the stuff there about a month, and then I called them. said, I'm going to get my stuff back. And uh, that's because I went on Craigslist, and I found this <laughs> massive piece of junk for 500 bucks up in Delaware. And I was like, I can, I can machine my own stuff, man. <laughs> it took a long time to figure out how to do it all. And... Uh, I mean, it came with this nice table. 500 bucks, you can't beat this. And uh, I got all these bits I bought off of Amazon. And then I found my little uh, thread gauge I was looking for is out here. I've been looking at that thing forever. Here's another plastic gear. This was a prototype. It's hollow. The other ones are solid. But, uh, so anyhow, uh, about yesterday I finally got set up with a process. And uh, basically what I do is... I put the uh, key stock in here, face it, and then round off the edges, okay, like, because the original ones are rounded, so I rounded these two, okay, then I put in, uh, where is it, then I put in, I purposely bought this little short stubby thing as a pilot, so it doesn't flex around, and so I you know, pilot it, and then I use this regular bit and bore it so after it's faced rounded drilled with a pilot and bored we whip it out and we mark it with a sharpie here and here because these are a, a thousandth of an inch off they're not square they're rectangular and if you don't put it back in here right oh everything's off so we mark it with a sharp, sharpie here and here loosen it here and here pull it out whip it over here stick it in there measure it with that thing cut it off Put that piece over there to be faced later. Pull that up, put it back in here, and uh, tighten it up. 
and then kind of eyeball it to see if it's wobbling and it's, it is and it's worked pretty good this way and then we start again face it round it drill it next so i've made a bunch of these so i'll probably be your only source <laughs> for the correct tower heights for roller rockers <laughs> so that's what i've been doing for the last two days is messing with this stupid thing but uh you know i left this thing out here for two years and i came out here and looked at it all disgusted oh my god look at this thing's all rusted up well it worked out pretty good once you use it most of the rust comes off of it see <laughs> so but uh it's not bad for 500 bucks i mean it works it's really hokey but it does a job <laughs>